friends welcome back to the channel it's been a while i've actually been traveling a lot and then i got sick after traveling so it took a few days to be back here but we're finally back on the grind and we got some cool videos this one is definitely going to help you guys a lot especially those of you that are getting into some 3d stuff trying to mix it in with some of your projects i'm going to explain my entire workflow getting things from cinema 4d to after effects and even in premiere so we're going to start in premiere we're going to work all the way up and i'm just going to talk about setting up our scenes i'm going to talk about tracking so that everything can match up i'm going to talk about some useful ways we can render we can create our scenes a bunch of useful information all throughout anyways if you guys are new here consider subscribing and joining the community all relevant links are going to be in the description check out my website as well if you guys need any preset packs and plugins we also have some new stuff coming soon but let's get right into the tutorial so so i actually shot this footage myself this is from an upcoming project that i directed and i'm going to be editing as well so this looks pretty solid i'm going to grab a little clip out of the sequence here to bring into after effects and create a dynamic link so that when we do do all of the cinema 4d stuff all the after effects stuff with that dynamic link we can come back here and everything that we've done will be within premiere so let's go ahead and right click on this clip or what i like to do is i'll hold down alt and drag it up i'll right click here and then replace with after effects comp so now we have our footage within after effects and the great thing about starting in after effects instead of starting within cinema 4d when you do want to do these animations is that you can actually bring your after effects tracking information over into cinema 4d which is super useful because that way when you do drag it in it's not just going to be static on the page you can actually 3d track it within your scene so let's go ahead and try and pull off a 3d track here uh, it may be hard just because this is handheld footage and it's a little bit shaky but we'll see what we can do so let's right click on this footage i'm going to go to track and stabilize and i'm going to click track camera and it's going to and it's going to go ahead and do its thing also i apologize if i sound a little bit different in this video like i said i had a fever for the past like four days so i'm still kind of coming down from that okay so this 3d camera tracker actually did a way better job than i expected just scrolling through here you can see it did really well so pulled off a really nice track which is going to be amazing for when we do want to bring in an animation so let's go ahead and create our camera i'm just going to click this create camera button over in our effect controls for after effects and that's going to create a little 3d camera another great thing you can do if you want a little reference point for where you do want to place an animation um, say we want to place something spinning on this rock you can actually use this little bullseye here right click and just create a solid and then we can even scale the solid up and if we drag along you're going to see it's just going to stick on that rock bringing the solid in is just a useful thing if you do want to kind of mess around with the positioning something it'll make a little bit more sense soon once we hop into cinema 4d so once you've done this all you need to do is go up to file and then export and then go to max on cinema 4d exporter okay so it's going to say 2d layers found these will not be exported that's completely fine all it's going to export is the camera tracker and this track solid so we'll click ok and then go ahead and save this somewhere so i'm going to click save now we can go ahead and open up cinema 4d now with cinema 4d open let's go ahead and just open up that save that we just did within after effects so i'm going to go over to ssd here it is right here open that up and the great thing about this is if I play through, this is the exact same camera that we just did in After Effects. So if we play something in this actual Cinema 4D scene, it's going to be completely tracked using the same camera movement from our scene, which is pretty cool. And like I said, we have the track solid there, so we can actually place things within our scene um, and they'll be fully tracked in. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag in a little 3D skull project file from this um, Bill Ellis skull pack. I'm going to leave a link to that down below if you would like it. And I'm just going to actually find an OBJ version of that. So I'm going to drag an OBJ, open that up click OK. If you guys need any kind of 3D models, I made a full video talking about the best places where you can get free 3D assets. It's a super great video for helping find things like this. Now the trick here is what we need to do is we need to position this skull so that it matches up with our track solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up this null and this contains our 3D camera tracker and our track solid. You're going to see that this 3D camera tracker is actually selected. I'm going to unselect that for now so that I'm not following the camera. And here we're free to actually just move around. So I'm gonna hold down Alt to rotate and I'm gonna select this skull and I'm gonna try and place it within 3D space to match with this track solid. So the skull is a little bit small right now. I'm just gonna click on coordinates in the bottom right. My camera's covering it a little bit. So here you go, coordinates, click on that tab. I'm gonna make this all maybe fives, maybe even something like all sevens. And then I'm going to move this in position with the track solid. And if you guys are really new to Cinema 4D, um, the best way to navigate around is using these tools to move left and right, forward and back, and then rotate. Also hold Alt to rotate, mouse wheel, and then use these axes. Make sure you're rotating the camera a lot so that um, this is really being covered by all points. So I'm gonna file, save this, 
I'm gonna go ahead and check my camera back on like that. I'm gonna play it and you see it's completely tracked onto that track solid. And even better, what we can do is since we just saved that, we can hop back into After Effects and we can actually drag in the same exact project file that we saved from After Effects earlier. And the great thing about C4D and After Effects being linked together is once this is actually imported in here, you guys are gonna see this pop on the screen. Now, the reason why this isn't tracked in is let's go back to Cinema 4D. Um, I think we saved it before we actually checked the camera on, so let's just save that one more time. Hop back into After Effects and that should be fixed. Okay, and there we go. So as you see, if I drag along, that tiny little skull is gonna be sticking onto the rock, which is pretty cool. And the great thing about doing this is now you can go back in and line things up properly. So let's go back into Cinema 4D and let's go ahead and make that a lot bigger because that was way too small on the rock. I'm just gonna go back to that coordinates tab and let's go ahead and make these all something like uh, 14. So we're just gonna double the size like that and then maybe drag it a little bit on the Z axis, realign everything. So make sure your camera's checked and then go ahead and file, save that, hop back into After Effects and see the changes happen in real time, which is great. So now you see we have that skull completely tracked onto there. Think about making it even a little bit bigger. Let's go back into C4D bam that's looking pretty cool so what we can do here is let's go ahead and hide the track solid go back into c4d always remember to hide this track solid as well file save that hop into after effects file save that and there you go now the track solid is gone and the only issue is you guys are seeing these kind of lines that's going along here that's because technically it's not rendered yet what you can do go back into cinema 4d if you're ready with the scene you can render this out i'm going to show you how to render and then we're going to talk about some more complex scenes i want to kind of get the basics out of the way because that's the most important parts and then i'm going to show you some more flashy stuff and some more helpful tips so in terms of rendering let's click on this little settings button to give you your render settings you can choose your renderer so i'm going to put it on standard you can put it on physical if you want as well or if you have something flashy like octane or the arnold renderer those are two different things that could help a lot but we'll go more into that later. The cool thing about bringing that After Effects 3D track camera into here is it's automatically gonna match the project settings within Cinema 4D and After Effects. Automatically set to 1920 by 1080. Now, what you wanna make sure you're doing is that frames are rendering out are going from zero to however long this is going. So this goes to 93. You can also just make sure it's clicking all frames. Now click on save folder. I'm going to make skull on rock animation. Click here, name the actual file like that, and then click save. And then whenever you do start rendering this, it's going to export a bunch of TIFF PSD files, which is what you want to keep it lossless, all into this little animate, all into this folder. It's going to export a bunch of pictures and then we'll bring those pictures back into After Effects, import them as a video file. So let me show you how to do that. So this is looking pretty good. You can go through, change any of this, add anti-aliasing if you want. Of course, add lighting. I'm just showing you a super basic workflow tutorial. I'm not really talking about the design elements that much. I will touch on that a little bit later, but what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna click this button to render to picture viewer. And what you're gonna see is it's gonna start rendering and it's gonna put everything within that little, little skull rock animation folder which I created earlier. And since this is such a simple scene, it's gonna render super, super fast. Now a super great tip to speed this up if you do have a more complex scene is to use a render farm. And that's something I really wanna talk about. The render farm that I like to use is called um, Ranch Computing. I'm gonna leave a link to this below. And basically it's pretty cheap prices. All you need to do is just download their little manuals all along for how to install and um, read their little manuals on what you need to do. But basically you need to install this plugin called RAN Checker that they have. Um, and once you install the plugin, um, you can go ahead and click check project and it's just gonna run this little thing to check and make sure that your project is able to actually render out through their site and it'll create a little file wherever your project is saved, a VUC file. All you need to do is take that VUC file and then plug it into the dashboard of this thing and make sure that you're matching the same project in terms of the render you're using. If you want me to, I can make a full tutorial how to do this step by step if it is easier for you guys, but I thought this was a great thing to mention because it has helped me huge, huge amount in terms of rendering out some animations for my most recent project, which is gonna be dropping soon. All right guys, so the animation has finished within Cinema 4D. Let's go back into After Effects and then let's drag all those back in. So let's go ahead and open up our project bin here on the left. And we're gonna go back to that folder where we just exported all of those animation frames. 
so go ahead and open that up so that's looking good to bring these all into after effects go up to file and you're going to want to go to import import multiple files now navigate back to where that folder was so skull on a rock animation all of our files here all you need to do is just select the first frame so zero 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 make sure tiff sequence is checked make sure tiff sequence is checked import as footage correct so this is all the defaults click import and then this will pop up again just click done all right and now you'll see it just created this little file drag that in there and this is actually all of those tiff images put together into one video file which is great so that's what it is looking like then there is a black background so what you can do you can either change the blending mode or you can just look up a simple little color key in your effect controls drag it on there and then just drop it like that and then you can bump it off a little bit as well now if you don't want to do the color key method an easier way to do that that i forgot to mention is when you are rendering this out under save you can actually check alpha channel and that'll actually render it out with a transparent background so keep that in mind that's something that i forgot to mention completely track to a specific spot but this doesn't look too good because i did it in literally five seconds let's go in and talk about some more complex scenes now that you guys know the actual basics of going from cinema 4d to after effects and i forgot to mention file save that here and with that dynamic link we now have that within premiere let's hop back into cinema 4d and i think the best way to kind of give you guys some better tips is let's go ahead and show you some more complex scenes so all right so i'm just going to give you a little breakdown of some scenes that i've created talk a little bit about my workflow things i like using within cinema 4d some cool plugins stuff like that so for this one, I use Octane for a lot of the lighting. Um, and you'll see I created this terrain here. I actually followed a tutorial on creating um, this kind of Mars look and I thought it turned out pretty cool. We got some Octane fog in here. So if I just click Octane and go to the live viewer window, then click this, it might lag. So if the video gets choppy, that's why. I actually turned the fog off so that it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, but here's a little breakdown of this scene. As you can see, we have some kind of depth of field effects going on here with some blurring. That's just using some of the um, Cinema 4D Octane camera settings that you can go through and change. Uh, we also have some little three, we also have some little crosses that I just got from um, Turbo Squid. I animated them to just spin around. We also have a we also have a character here. I got that from Daz 3D. You get a bunch of cool characters there, and then the rest I found from Turbo Squid. The chair, the sword, the little halo you can just make using a Taurus, um, and then this actual arch scene. Close that so my computer doesn't explode. Now that you guys got the little gist of it, I'm not going to break down all the things I did to create this. Whether it's the keyframes, the animations the animations, the breakdown of this. If you want me to make a full breakdown on this scene or any of the other scenes I'm going to show you, just let me know in the comments. But in terms of finding the actual assets, like I said, I made a full video talking about where to find them. I'm going to link that. In terms of talking about the keyframes, I also made a full video talking about animating in um, Cinema 4D. And in terms of this actual character, like I said, I used Daz 3D to get this character. And I also animated his head just to kind of swivel in a little bit. Pretty sure I used um, a site called Mixamo to get this pose. And I've talked about Mixamo a lot. It's an amazing website for creating uh, animations. But if we just go through the objects, I'll give you guys a little bit of a breakdown. Like I said, I was using Octane for the lighting. So if I actually turn off my camera and turn around here, I'll show you how this scene was lit. So we have a light going on here. We also have a red light behind our actual arch coming down here. Camera is placed on this little hill here. And if we do click on our camera, let's go back to our camera view and click on our little camera tag. You can see if we go to the camera imager, go to thin lens, I changed the aperture and the f-spot so that this would have this nice bokeh effect. I also turned on the camera imager and post-processing to get some glow out of the lights. Here's another little scene we're going to talk about briefly. Um, as you can see, here's the rendered out version and here's what the design of it looks like. So far, we talked about Octane in this tutorial. And so with Octane, you can create an Octane scatter. I also use this plugin called Forester, which is super useful to create trees, grass, things like that. I may have mentioned it in other tutorials. But I basically grab some little parts of Forrester, I drop them into the Octane Scatter, um, and I kind of scatter them across these hill to create these grassy hills, which is really nice. In terms of the sky, I just loaded in an Octane Sky, and I dropped in a little HDRI texture for that. So we talked about Octane, we talked about Forrester. So we talked about Octane, we talked about Forrester. Let's go through and just talk about some more plugins, and then we'll talk about some other cool stuff. Playing around with some other plugins to create this smoke on this praying girl animation. In terms of the animations, I used Mixamo, like I said, to create this, and then Turbulence FD 
to create this smoke around the character. And what's cool is that this actually creates a smoke simulation or fire simulation. And when rendered out, this is what it's gonna look like. And I actually manipulated this within post when I brought it back into After Effects and gave it this cool kind of holographic gray flashy look. So a bunch of new cool 3D tutorials coming soon. Here's another great one that I wanna talk about how to create this kind of sword fight scenes. I'm gonna talk about how to link um, your samurai swords to a character, how to get them within Mixamo, and I even added Turbulence FD to add a whole bunch of smoke into the scene itself. So we talked about everything from finding your assets, finding your environment, animating your 3D models, um, setting up the lighting, some cool different plugins like Octane, um, Turbulence FD. We also talked about 3D tracking After Effects and bringing it back into After Effects bringing in the TIFF files. So hopefully that has helped your workflow in general. You can create some amazing stuff if you mix 3D with After Effects and then bring it back into Premiere with the dynamic link. Anyways, guys, like I said, check out the description for all relevant links. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.